Welcome to this week's edition of Mountain Outhouse News. I'm your host, Jam Jam. This is the craziest shit to happen in running this week. This week's stories include a new Arizona Trail FKT, a 100 mile treadmill attempt, and the Tam Diablo Tam Mega Run. This week, we begin with a look at Mario Mendoza's 100 mile treadmill record attempt. Mario is no stranger to treadmill records as he previously set marks at multiple distances. Last year, he ran a 639.26 for a new 100K world record with an incredible negative split performance. His first 50K was 320, followed up by a 318. Back in early 2020, he also went after the 50K record and ran in front of a live audience at Madras High School. He was chasing Michael Wardian's 259.49 and squeaked just under in 259.03. This time, Mario was chasing the 100-mile world record, as well as the 12-hour best. Zach Bitter lowered Dave Proctor's record time, which was set at 1232.26 with a 12.09 set at his home in Phoenix last year. Mario had a reportedly great first 50 miles, but then ran into some hip flexor issues and stopped just after the 100K mark. If you thought we were done talking treadmill 100-mile attempts, well, you're wrong. We're just getting started. Taggart Van Etten is gearing up for his own May 1st attempt. If you recall, Taggart won the Tunnel Hill 100 as his first ultra in 1219 last fall, second fastest time to none other than Zach Bitter. Well, he's been putting in some major work and will be doing his own attempt inside the Seasons Gastropub in Morton, Illinois. Rumor has it he'll be streaming on Twitch, and we'll even have a second treadmill on hand for others to run with him. If you don't follow him, you'll have to check out some of his training on Strava. He's cranking out 200 plus mile weeks with a weekly sub six hour 50 mile long run. Crazy. We're following up on the Australian Backyard Blister Ultra that our friend of the show, Jem Rumi, was running in last week. He didn't have the day he was hoping for, having to withdraw after 13 loops of the race. But the winner of the event ended up being Ben Hurst, who completed 35 laps, or 145.83 miles. The coverage of the Istanbul Half Marathon caught some attention this week after it was uncovered that the commentators were literally reading word-for-word -word copy from the Half Marathon Wikipedia page. At one point, reading lines such as, If finisher medals are awarded, the medal or ribbon may differ from those for the full marathon. I mean, what? As for this year's results, we saw a new women's half marathon world record. Ruth Chepengetic destroyed the previous best time by 29 seconds. She ran a 104.02, coming agonizingly close to the first sub 104 women's half. Next up, we have some news relating to the Ultra Trail Cape Town race in South Africa. Previously, participants in the brutally tough 100K trail running race had just 17 hours to complete the course due to local restrictions on park hours. This tight cutoff time meant that in a typical year, just half the field would be able to finish. The event just announced that they have received approval to extend the cutoff times for the race to a full 24 hours, likely allowing for a majority of the participants to have a shot at crossing that finish line. This week's episode is brought to you by Red Bull and the Wings for Life World Run, taking place at 4 a.m. Pacific on May 9th. The event seeks to raise money to find a cure for spinal cord injuries. Thousands around the world will start running at the same time and run as fast as possible until the virtual catcher car passes you. Join me and find info at wingsforlifeworldrun.com. Next, we head into the world of FKT news and long trail news. Lucy Bartholomew took to the 231 kilometer Lara Pinta Trail in Northern Australia for a through run. That's just over 143 miles of what looks like very technical and beautiful terrain. At points, she was full-on swimming through some narrow canyon sections due to recent heavy rains. While I'm unsure if this was an FKT, it looks like an awesome adventure nonetheless. Congrats to Lucy. Well, this one we do know is a newly confirmed fastest known time on the Pinhoti Trail that travels 335 miles across Alabama and Georgia. Corey Woltering lowered the men's supported time from five days, 13 hours, 21 minutes set last year by Caleb Yan to a new time of five days, seven hours, 22 minutes, just finishing up today when I filmed the show. Corey abandoned plans for an Arizona Trail FKT attempt 
and is now eyeing the Coca Dona 250 early next month, pending his recovery from Pinote. Speaking of the Arizona Trail, have y'all been following along over on Pilot Field's YouTube channel for episodes of Joe McConaughey's AZT Onslaught? After setting a ridiculous pace for the first half of the trail, Joe started encountering deep snow above the Mogollon Rim, not uncommon this time of year, and was literally stopped in his tracks further north up on the Kaibab Plateau above Grand Canyon. He at one point abandoned his attempt completely and quit after post-holing for many hours and miles with bloody legs from breaking through the icy layers of snow covering the trail. Below, it was unclear that it would be possible to safely continue. With the encouragement and help of his crew, he did go back out on the trail. His crew helped trek ahead to break trail for him, and eventually he made it all the way on foot up to the state line trailhead in Utah, setting a new overall fastest known time, 13 days, three hours, 21 minutes. This shaved more than two and a half days off the previous supported record held by Michael Versteeg, and more than a day off of Josh Perry's supported record. Joe is now the first and only person to go sub two weeks on the 800 mile long trail. Also out on the Arizona trail this week was Candace Burt, who unfortunately had to abandon her attempt after a few days after a dental issue forced her to seek medical attention. Hey there, if you're enjoying this week's show, please drop us a like on the video and comment below your favorite story of the week. We now have a couple shares from Patty O'Leary this week. The first is the Run for Ama Ultramarathon, which is a fundraiser for UCSF Cancer Center. He ran 62 miles across the course near the Skyline Ridge Preserve and Mendingo Hill. This was also a tribute to Robert Rhodes. Patty also highlighted Oscar Mejarada's Pam Diablo Tam run, which was a wild 110 mile route that had him starting in Mill Valley, climbing to the top of Mount Tam, then running across the bay to Mount Diablo for a summit, and then back to Tam again. He finished in just under 30 hours, and the route had 10,000 feet of climb, with a mix of trails, roads, and more. In this week's bonus story, only available for Patreon supporters, we'll chat more Arizona Trail and whether or not I'll ever consider doing it again. Now for a few race results from the week. The Chicago Lakefront 50K saw 71 finishers, although no record times this year on the flat and fast course. Todd Gunter was your men's winner in 331, and Tracy Escobedo was the ladies' winner in 433. At the Naked Prussian 50 miler, we saw Graham Pete take the win overall in 7.19.41, and Kathleen Cusick take the women's win in 9.29. The event saw 105 finishers and is held in Lee's Sport, Pennsylvania, around the Blue Marsh Lake Trail System. Thank you for tuning in to episode 198 of Outhouse News. Be sure to subscribe to get the latest episode, and if you'd like to support the show, please consider joining Steep Life Media on Patreon, where you'll enjoy bonus content each week right from me for as little as $2 a month. We want to mention by name our $25 level supporters and up. At the $100 level, Brian Sands. At the $50 level, Squirrels Nut Butter, Mark Grabowski, Peter and Patty Curry, as well as our $25 level supporters, Carrie Savage, Michael Perez, Nick Bailey, Steve De La Cruz, York Beach Runner, Michael Adams, and 10 Junk Miles. And finally, if you'd like to own this week's pair of Jam Jam's sunglasses, check out the link below. Have a shitty week. <laughs>